Okay, let me tell you what's currently going on with this Lincoln Navigator. It's a 2015 model here. Um, I just put the mileage up here on the screen. Uh, it was like 169, 259, or maybe 169, 258 by the time you see the picture, but doesn't matter. As I'm doing this recording, it's 169, 259, okay? 169,259 miles. Anyway, so let me tell you a quick story. I'm gonna try to make it as quickly as possible. Last year, 2021, it's early October, uh, I got a check engine light on this vehicle. I'm gonna have a couple of lessons in this video for you, very important pieces of advice. If you want to have a stress-free experience with this vehicle, I'm giving you advice. You can do what you want with it, but you can't hold me liable. How about that? All right, so here we go. First of all, do not hesitate to take your vehicle in. If you live in an emission state, always after getting your registration, just to protect yourself and to give yourself more time to repair or sort out a check engine light problem, take your vehicle back in a month after you get your vehicle uh, registration renewed and take the emissions test once again because you don't want it to expire. It lasts for 12 months. But you could take it multiple times. For me, from now on, once I get this sorted out, I am going to take this vehicle in next month and do an emissions test and I'm going to take it in probably the following month. I'm going to make sure I take it in at least a month or two after the initial test that needs to be done. The reason I'm going to do this is to buy me more time in case this comes again so I wouldn't be stressing out over this right now. But I'm not like heavily stressed because I've been dealing with this for a while. So let me tell you the story. Let me tell you what happened. And I did four oxygen sensors for this vehicle. They were not easy to come by. I could have gotten the emissions test then, I would have been fine, but I didn't. Like an idiot, I didn't get an emissions test after putting them in, and the check engine light came back, and this time it was the catalytic converter. And it ended up being both catalytic converters. Took it to the dealership because I didn't want to deal with someone saying, oh, we can't do it and get it right, or we can, but they don't really get it right. The dealership told me it was going to be $3,000 to replace both of the catalytic converters on this 2015 Lincoln Navigator. I said, no way, that's too much money, and proceeded to go and look for another shop that would do it for less. Found a shop that said they would do it for $1,300. Well, you get what you pay for. Asked them up front, said, can you do this? Will I get a check engine light? Will it be a problem? No problem, sir, we can do it. No, they couldn't, it didn't work out gonna spare you all the the drama in between it took me eight months to get, finally get this guy to give me my money back he only gave me a thousand dollars back he basically gave me back the money for the parts and he kept the labor and normally I would say fair enough considering I'm driving with those catalytic converters on the vehicle but he could have saved me a lot of misery by telling me hey you know what, I have issues with these vehicles and I can't do it. I even gave him an out, but he didn't tell me the truth. So there's that. And here's another thing. Not only did he keep the $300 for the labor, but I told him that I think that the water pump may need to be replaced. So he replaced the water pump. So that was another 600 and some odd dollars. So really in his shop, I lost a thousand dollars. Right now I've got a genuine left side which is the driver's side catalytic converter, which was tough to get. I called everywhere to get it. There's only one dealership here in Georgia that had it. I drove out there and got it. And then the other one is a Magnaflow. So here's why this video is valuable because there's no other videos out here giving this information. Okay, so I have a Magnaflow for the, the right side, which is the why I'm gonna show that here on the video. And then I have the, the, the genuine Ford catalytic converter for the left side, which is a little bit less money. So. $912 for the right side and $717 for the left side. So just doing rough math, there's, that's what, uh, 1630? Am I right on that? I'm sorry. No. Yeah, 700 plus a nine. Yeah, so 1630. 1630 plus the thousand I lost at that shop do you see what I'm getting at now? And I'm gonna go give this guy at least $300, where he said 200 bucks, 
but I'm gonna give him $300 just because he's he's doing me right by not making me wait all day. He's gonna clear the bay and I'm gonna pull in and he's gonna get started. So $300 there. So what I'm saying is I've already lost over $3,000. And that's the other lesson in this video that I want you guys to understand. If you're gonna buy a vehicle like this, they're already not as reliable as a Toyota or a Honda or something like that. You're already gonna have a lot of problems out of a Ford. This, that's why this is my last Ford Lincoln. I am so done with them. There will be no more Ford Lincoln vehicles in our company at all. Anyway, that's me complaining, but I'm gonna let that go for now. Don't waste your time and your money trying to get things done cheaper because you will end up back at the dealership anyway. I've already been through this before. And I really thought it would be different. I just didn't think that they would have this same thing going on with their catalytic converters, but they do. This vehicle needs all four genuine parts or you won't get it fixed. It won't work properly. And you'll never get rid of the check engine light. So take my advice. Always use Ford genuine parts, OEM, whatever, I would just get make sure you get it directly from Ford. It makes sure it's branded with Ford Motor Company, okay? Make sure it's Motorcraft. And then make sure that you take your emissions test. Again, it's, it's $25 well spent if you go and do another emissions test a month after you do the, the, the next one. It, it buys you a whole another year to fix your problem. Because look at all this money I'm spending. I don't even know what to think right now. This is killing me. And I still have to deal with the turbo issue. Now I'll also throw this out there, even though I'll do a separate video. I'm about to hit 60,000 miles of driving with the instant shutter fix. So I have that, you know, so it's got a transmission issue, but like I said, the instant shutter fix is holding it off for now. So got that going on. But so my next thing after dealing with this, and I hope this works today, See, there's a, there's a strong possibility that this guy may install these catalytic converters and it still won't work because it needs to be plugged up to Ford's computer and then they need to approve it. I verified this with our state emissions department. It's crazy, it's insane, it's robbery, it's highway robbery, but that's what you deal with when you drive these vehicles. Now, And I know now why there's so few of us out here using this in this business. I mean, God. So uh, going back to Chevy after this, that's it, guys. I'll have another video out to you soon. I'm gonna let you know how this plays out. I'll follow up with it, but for now, this is it. Take care. See you in the next video.